say a few words here about these uh, HPM 100s from Pioneer. Uh, these speakers are on loan to me. Um, I actually did a little bit of work on them, uh, refinishing the cabinets. They were in pretty rough shape when they came to me. Uh, didn't want to do a full restoration on these speakers, but wanted to make the veneers look a bit nicer. Uh, so what I did was I uh, sanded these down. Uh, I believe I used 120 and then I did 400 uh, just to get the majority of the scratches out. Get a nice, nice smooth surface. The, uh, the, the uh, finish was modeling really bad before. Uh, the owner was treating it with uh, some orange oil, uh, which I use as well. Um, I'll uh, link the product that I use for like a quick cleanup on speakers just to kind of bring out the natural beauty in the wood and restore the finish a bit. Um, that generally works really well. Um, but these speakers, um, I believe they got wet uh, and it raised the grain on the veneers. And so the finish was really modeled uh, looking. So it really wasn't going, there's was no amount of oil that was really gonna soak in and, and uh, fix that issue with the grain being raised. So we sanded it down um, as much as I felt I safely could without breaking through the veneers. Uh, and then we treated it with uh, water locks, which is an excellent product. I, I can't speak highly enough of that stuff. Um, I went with the gloss product. Um, I do feel that it is a little bit too shiny, um, but with water locks in about six months, it will uh, the the shininess will fade a bit. It'll just get into its natural uh, luster, which really is a nice finished product. So I do I recommend the the water locks product. It's a tongue oil based product, um, and uh, I'll put a link to that down below as well. Uh, now, about these speakers, uh, these were, uh, I think, uh, Pioneer's attempt to sort of take on uh, JBL and some of, their, um, some of their speakers that were bringing a bit of that studio sound into the home. Uh, and I think that, like, these probably compare to, like, the L100s. Uh, and I think that that's a pretty fair comparison. Uh, I will say that these speakers, and you may hear it in a little bit in the recordings, um, I believe there is uh, probably, I think these crossovers need to be rebuilt. There's a little bit of distortion in upper treble, but not in the, um, the presence treble where we're getting out of, uh, out of these little um, presence, these super tweeters. Um, I think it's coming from the, uh, the, lar the paper cone tweeter um, and I don't know if it's a mechanical problem with the speaker or if it's the uh, crossover I haven't really dug into it too deep the customer didn't want me to take a look at that so um, I do notice a little bit of distortion coming out of those tweeters um, it bothers me <laughs> um, but I hear a lot of good things coming out of these speakers outside of that and I think that again that there's probably an issue with these speakers that needs to be addressed. Um, and I know that the uh, pots um, for the treble in the mid-range up here, um, they work on one speaker and they're, they don't work on the other. And on the one speaker that they do work on, uh, there's a bit of uh, like static when you're adjusting them. So I think that probably those both need to be rebuilt. And I would also go through crossovers and replace everything. but. Um, we don't want to go that far with these speakers, um, and they do sound good. Um, I believe uh, they're really good for rock and roll. Um, they've got a nice, deep, uh, punchy bass. Uh, the, the woofers are, are great. Um, I would say comparable to the JBL woofers, maybe not quite as good, uh, but certainly comparable. Um, the uh, the Super Tweeter gives a nice presence, uh, and the mid-range is covered well, but again, I start to get some of that distortion from the upper mid-range, 
uh, which again bothers me. It, you hear it most in voices. Um, I did include a track that has whistling and you can really hear uh, the distortion and the whistling. Um, but beautiful speakers. Um, I, they, I believe they use a really high quality uh, set of drivers in these speakers. The, uh, the Super Tweeter is an interesting design. I've not seen that kind of design in any other uh, tweeter. Uh, it is uh, a like a half cylinder or maybe a third cylinder design. Um, and I'm guessing they're trying to go for a wide uh, dispersion ratio. Get that nice wide sound from the, uh, from the upper treble where it's just where you're getting a lot of presence. Um, which I think is actually a, a good idea um, uh, to have the lower treble where you're talking more like uh, hi hats and and upper parts of voices kind of a little bit more narrow with the um, with the uh, paper cone tweeter, but then uh, with the presence, it's got a nice wide uh, dispersion of the of the sound, which I think is a is an interesting design. I think it works. Um, probably. This uh, aluminum trim around the tweeter um, is not, I'm not a super fan of that design. Um, it seems like it might cause some issues um, because it is proud of the, of the cone of the tweeter. It could, um, could cause some like tunneling effects. I haven't really measured them, so I don't know that that's the case, but um, I'm not sure that that's uh, a great design for a tweeter um, flange. But overall, I think these speakers sound really good. Uh, again, if, they, if these ones had a little bit of work done, I think they could sound excellent. Um, and uh, yeah, I was glad to have them in here to audition and uh, make them look a little nicer. I think they look pretty great. So uh, yeah, if you're a rock and roller, I think these speakers would be make you really happy. So, um, so that's it on these Pioneer HPM 100s. Uh, Thanks for watching. See you.